Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we have Vector Prime versus Odin, the Sky Father of Transformers versus the Sky Father of Marvel. Let's begin. So to start off with Vector Prime, Vector Prime actually has a lot of lore to him. He's actually able to exist outside of time and space. That's one, and he's incredibly powerful. To the he's the only Prime to actually consistently go toe to toe with Unicron by himself here. Now, Vector Prime also has a Minicon attached to him. I think his name was Safeguard as well. And Minicons are a decent multiplier when it comes to power. You could actually say it's probably like, eh, probably like Super, Super, ah, Super Saiyan 2. <laughs> it's a 10 times multiplier. And Vector Prime also possesses some incredible hacks. Like, for example, he's able to use energy barriers to reduce Unicron's damage. He has a Cyber Planet Key, which activates more of his hidden power. He's also able to use Raceling, a sword that is literally able to cut your very existence out of you. Basically, you get hit with that sword, it's uh, it's GG. Like, th there's no if, and, or buts about it. Vector Prime is also one of the few strongest Primes out there, up there with the likes of the Fallen and Onyx Prime. As a matter of fact, he's actually been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and beat the Fallen consistently. He's also been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Megatron himself. This is Megatron from the Unicron Trilogy. And he's been able to do this on the Astral Plane, which is beyond the multiverse. Speaking of which, let's talk about it. Vector Prime is so powerful that he... So much more powerful than the other Primes that he is one of two. One of two Primes that can actually transcend the Omniverse. Keep in mind, the Transformers Omniverse is a collection of multiple multiverses, some of them not even Transformers related. You have Ben 10, and actually you have Star Wars, Doctor Who, and there's also, if you really want to talk about it, there's Marvel in there as well. Now, Vector Prime himself also has some ridiculous hacks. For example, his time manipulation. He's able to do everything with it. He could freeze you. He could erase you from it. He could literally de he could de-age you. He could uplift you. He's able to stop, freeze, fast forward. You, you, you get my point, right? He's a he's a very overpowered time manipulator. <laughs> All right, and consider the fact that he's able to create energy barriers out of K-Wall stopping Unicron and being able to contain whole galaxies and being able to save multiple universes. Keep in mind the Transformers multiverse is infinite in size and the other multiverses would also be so for those of you who want to know if ben 10 has an infinite multiverse i think that's pretty simple to say that it's a pretty hard spoken yes so with vector prime as well being able to transcend the omniverse this actually goes into his true form which he's able to use to go into other multiverses or universes uh depending on which one he feels like because sometimes he does visit main timeline ben Ben's universe to actually check up on him and also has stated that there are Ben 10 aliens within the Transformers multiverse he's also been able to defeat elder gods like I said before he's able to defeat the fallen this is the same fallen that is literally a threat to the entirety of the Transformers multiverse so again consistently consistently Vector Prime is an outerversal character as a matter of fact considering he's also beaten the Unicron Singularity, which is basically the, basically Unicron's chaotic energy itself, and it's almost close to its true form as well, you could honestly, you could honestly argue that Vector Prime himself is in the higher, I guess you could say in the higher categories of Outerversal, and to give you a good scale of his power here, He's able to defeat Ramjet, who he said was his most powerful opponent. Keep in mind, Ramjet had exhort four dead universes, which are violent in energy, very volatile. And, and he had four minicons on him. So basically, if one is 10, having four would be 40. So he had a 40 times multiplier. And Vector Prime not only went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him with only one minicon, but he absolutely, he, he beat him. <laughs> Like, it was absolutely nothing. He beat Ramjet like it was nothing, in all honesty. And then he used his cyber key power to actually beat back the entirety of the Unicron Singularity. But without further ado, we're going to head into his opponent, Odin. Now, Odin himself is the father of Thor, Loki, Angela, and is the all-father of the Nine Realms. 
Odin is so powerful that his a mere wave of his hand had snuffed out the fires that, sorry, Zerter's flames, which were engulfing Idrisil. Keep in mind that Idrisil is kind of like an access point for, I guess you could say, a miniature multiverse. Now, universes in Marvel are infinite in size, with some universes actually containing concepts. This would include dimensions that transcend even godhood themselves. And Odin is able to do this with a whiff of his hand. Keep in mind that Idrisil itself gave Doctor Strange so much power that he was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and absolutely dog walk no, who was able to cut Celestials apart like it's nothing. And keep in mind, this is the same Idrisil that allowed Doctor Strange to surpass the levels of a Sorcerer Supreme. Odin's energy projection is absolutely no joke. Being able to shake the entire multiverse and his power in the power he had itself scared the serpent and the worthy. Keep in mind that the worthy were beings that had Thor level strength on top of their own. This includes characters like Hulk and the Thing, who at a at a low ball would be universal. So imagine stacking another universal power that's equivalent or slightly better, because again, you get you getting the power of Thor, you getting all them hexes. And yet the serpent, Odin's brother, was still frightened of him. Crazy, ain't it? Odin's power has barely any limit. He's not he's not omnipotent. He's not omnipotent. But his limits really don't really they don't really have a I guess you could say a tangible spectrum, you know? He's been able to give Iron Man the knowledge of the entirety of the 616 universe, and his head didn't explode. He's been able to cast spells that are capable of dropping Thor's hammer, and he's been able to take hits from characters like Thor, Silver Surfer, and Thanos. As a matter of fact, his headbutt was so powerful that it actually knocked out Galactus, albeit you could say it was a temporary knockout because Galactus is him. L let's be real. L let's be real here. Galactus is pretty much him here. And Galactus um, was actually knocked out for a time. It actually crumbled his armor and knocked him out for a good amount of time here. So this means that Odin, physically speaking, should be more dominant than some of the strongest characters in Marvel. He's also so powerful that back in the day, or at least the BC Avengers era, Odin was fighting Dark Celestials. Dark Celestials are beyond the regular means or the regular... What am I trying to say here? Or pretty much beyond regular Celestials. And they butchered him. And what I mean butchered, they straight up annihilated every single one of them. Except, I think it was Esson. Yeah, Esson was the one that actually uh, somehow managed to survive it. But hey, Esson, Esson definitely gives credible credit due. He survived that. Meanwhile, all his other Celestial kin did it. Keep in mind that Odin himself also has... Size manipulation, molecular manipulation, um, cosmic energy, size manipulation as well as he was able to grow to the size of, uh, what's her name, Carnilla and Zurus, who are both respectively Skyfather beings, and Odin absolutely was more powerful than her, that simply his mere presence on arrival, she was scared of him. Again, Odin is... The top tier of Sky Fathers, only being rivaled by Zeus himself. So in all honesty, uh, Odin has a lot. Odin has a lot going for him in this fight here. But let's really talk about this here. Who wins in a in a rock and sock and matchup? Who wins this fight more often than not? So when it comes down to these two, I actually understood why a lot of people loved this fight. It's been on for years versus battle uh Wiki. Quora, um, so on and so forth, you know, all these, <coughs> excuse me, all these, um, these battles with Vector Prime and Odin, and both of them give their respect here, however, when it comes down to it, I do see Odin beating a, I do see Odin beating a avatar of Vector Prime, extreme difficulty though, I do think Odin is going to be worn out and definitely, uh, it's going to require the Odin sleep afterwards, all right? Yes, he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with characters like Thanos. He's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with characters, you know, um, like Zeus. He surpassed other Skyfathers like Zeus, who respect him, and Carnilla, who had the power of a Skyfather as well. However, however, I do think Odin is going to struggle a massive lot here.
You see, the thing about this is, even if Oda is able to beat an avatar here, he's not going to beat the true form of Vector Prime here. That's how, that's honestly how it is here. I give both easily. They're easily in the mid-tier outer versal class. However, when you get into true forms, which are like platonic concept eras, they're absolutely beyond all forms of concepts in their respective universes. And again, they fought pretty similar characters. Ramjet and Thanos, I would consider in the same category, with Ramjet being slightly more powerful. I would say Thanos has better hatch resistance. But at the end of the day here, if I had to say how this fight would go, I would definitely say that Vector Prime, at the end of the day, is going to win it, but not as an Avatar. I think as his true form, with him having a much higher cosmology scaling, him having a much higher um, transcendence as well, with him being able to transcend even the astral plane, which is much larger and is beyond the Transformers multiverse. And this is a realm that only thought to be accessed by both Primus and Unicron. And yeah, he and Onyx Prime can access it. Yeah, I would say at the end of the day, considering everything here, Odin would beat an avatar, but Vector Prime simply just uses his true form and just annihilates Odin. But hey, that's going to be all for today here. I would say Vector Prime takes it at the end of it. But let me know what you guys think down below. Comment, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.